Hi, welcome to Mayesh's Design Star Series, focusing on sustainability. I'm Pilar Zuniga of Gorgeous and Green, so I've been a sustainable and eco-friendly uh, florist for 15 years and more, and I feel like I have a lot to offer you and would like to share some of my insight and expertise and, of course, the design skills with you. Gorgeous and Green is both gorgeous and green, and I have always loved an abundance of flowers. So uh, it's always been a little bit tricky to figure out how to create that abundance and that beauty while also focusing on being as sustainable as possible. From the very start, I've always, always pushed for being kind to the environment and trying to reduce that footprint on the planet and the people. So in regards to the sustainable decisions that I make on a daily basis, um, I think a good example would be the installation that is behind me that I created um, here in the studio. Part of the floral designers, kind of our expertise is to problem solve. So in this way, I was thinking, what can I do with the space and make sure it's gonna be one, simple to set up and not require a lot of structure necessarily, and, um, but also create something that's really cool looking. This installation is something that was created primarily with branches and foliage and flowers. I basically had two strings supporting a bunch of branches. Some of those branches needed um, water, so they went into little tubes, um, the little compostable baggy tubes. Some of those branches didn't need water. So those branches that didn't need the water are they gonna be the support system and the framework. And then um, at the very base of the arrangement, we have a container that is actually holding water. the more something is processed, the less sustainable it is, right? So if we're actually just taking some branches from a tree, um, then they can go directly into compost. So just thinking about like all the steps it takes to reduce our, our footprint. Maybe I can do it without chicken wire, or maybe just a little bit of chicken wire. Also really paying attention to the type of flowers that I was using. So certain flowers need water uh, pretty quickly. So uh, one thing that I depended on was the flowers to either be super hardy and not need water for a period of time, or to use tools like the ocean pouches or um, the little water tubes that are in kind of like compostable baggies um, or an actual container that holds water. A lot of bulb flowers don't necessarily need water, especially if they're fairly hardy. Um, they can hang out for a little while. Using them in a way where they're naturally gonna kind of cascade down, and that's part of the look, right? I'm not expecting them to like raise up because they're not in water. They're gonna just do their little thing of dripping down the arrangement. Larkspur, for example, will start to wilt at the very tip because it's out of water. However, if I hang it upside down, then gravity's pulling it and you don't notice that it's wilting or starting to dry up. So in that way, I decided that I would actually use a beeswax twine to create a chain of larkspur so that they could hang and look pretty and they didn't necessarily need water. And as they wilted, it's not noticeable. Another thing was because these are all Mayesh items, I was buying consciously. So thinking about how can I support local farmers? How can I support regional? 
and then, you know, folks within the continent. So that's kind of the process that I think of when I'm gathering my floral and plant materials. And I know that I'm very, very lucky and that I'm in California. We have a very large growing season, so I can get a lot of different things all year round and actually very, very local. So I think just thinking of it that way and like, who has stuff right now in my vicinity? Another thing that I I really love to do is to reuse items. And I know a lot of other people love that because it reduces cost. We wanna have uh, vases and containers that are gonna be uh, well-made and be able to last. So in that way, I, I don't buy plastic materials and I really focus on items that um, are simply made or are just gonna last a very long time so I can use them over and over again. So really thinking about the creation, but also the breakdown. How can I create this design in a way where it's simple enough to then take it apart, reuse the pieces that I can reuse, and compost the pieces that I don't need? If the items have been spray painted, if they've been glued with uh, non-compostable, usually plastic glues um, or high chemical bonding agents, um, those items can't be co composted. If we've used any dyes or, or chemicals, um, maybe even like leaf shining agents, those are all chemicals that aren't necessarily belonging in our compost, right? And remember, compost is something that we are breaking back into soil. So what is it that we want to go into the soil, right? We want um, items that have the least amount of toxins, one of the biggest lessons I've learned as a sustainable florist for the past 15 years is to be comfortable with limitations. Uh, I think that a lot of people are afraid of not having the answer for their clients um, or not being able to do exactly what their clients want. So. Uh, what's really nice is being able to say one thing that I really focus on is creating beauty along with being as sustainable as possible. So within this um, design plan you have, these are the things that I can actually do and they're going to be so much more beautiful because they're going to be coming from such a beautiful place you can be sustainable and still maintain a business, still create an abundance of beauty and have everything from uh, wedding design, corporate design, to a retail shop, to a delivery service. So they're, they're all very possible. So I think being very, very comfortable in that space and learning to be creative in that space is very liberating. A lot of people ask me, how do I become either a sustainable business or just a sustainable florist? And so I have some pieces of advice to give you. Do a green business certification if that's available in your area. Um, it's just really an easy process. Somebody kind of guides you and gives you some ways to reduce your footprint and best practices as a business to be more sustainable. It starts the thinking about um, every business decision as an opportunity to be more sustainable, to be more eco-friendly, uh, to be more fair to people who are working and who deserve a fair wage. My last word would be to be honest about um, what you're doing and the decisions you're making. Um, it takes true honesty to sit down and do a mental and even maybe even a written inventory of your business decisions and look at, are they sustainable? Could they be more sustainable? Are there classes that I can take? Um, what, you know, asking yourself the question first, being honest about your answer, and then you can start to problem solve. That's the only way that you can create change, right? Behavior change is to be honest about what's really going on. There is some liberation in, you know, maybe creating some boundaries for yourself 
um, as a designer, as a business owner, as an individual. And the more that you practice it, the easier it gets. And I think that I've really enjoyed uh, designing sustainably and, and learning new ways to do stuff or, or, or coming up with ways that are simpler and cool looking, um, that you don't use as many process materials and are still amazingly beautiful. Thank you for watching. Stay gorgeous, stay green.